Affinity Photo offers both destructive and non-destructive approaches for applying mesh-based distortions to your images. The functionality is called Liquify, and I'll show you both approaches. First, the destructive approach is achieved by selecting an appropriate pixel layer. Here, I've got this main skull composite layer, which I can select. I'll then go to the top left and enter the Liquify persona. This completely changes the workspace and presents us with various mesh distortion tools on the left-hand tools panel, as well as several sliders and other settings on the right-hand set of panels. By default, a mesh grid is shown and uses a blue outline. This can be changed up here to make it more visible. For example, I'll change it to a strong green, bring the opacity all the way up to 100%, and also increase the division size, which will enlarge the overall spacing of the grid sections. If I now click drag on the document view, I'll start distorting pixel content. And you can see the mesh grid updates to reflect these distortions. The overall distortion can be reset at any time by clicking on Reset Mesh up here. We can also save and load mesh distortions if required as well. We might find the grid distracting, so we can also uncheck Show Mesh to hide it completely. Let's have a quick look at the tools on the left here. We start with the Push Forward tool selected. There is a Push Left tool directly underneath it, which creates a more extreme distortion effect. I'll select it, then click drag across the jaw to stretch that area of pixels. Notice on the bottom hint line that we are given a keyboard modifier. In order to reverse the direction, I can hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, then click drag from the same direction, left to right, and this now reverses the direction of the tool and corrects the stretching effect we just created. Look out for the hint line when using any tool in the Affinity apps, as it will always provide you with useful keyboard modifiers you can use to extend the tool functionality. Next, the Twirl tool is useful for creative distortion effects. I can click and hold the mouse button to start twirling the cloud detail down here. The effect is quite slow to apply by default, but I can change this by altering opacity and speed on the brush panel here. Speed will change the overall speed at which the distortion effect is applied, whereas opacity will control the overall strength or aggressiveness. Together, they can be used to make the effect quicker to apply. Now I can easily click over certain areas to distort them with very little effort. At this point, I should mention that the history panel in the bottom right contains every single operation performed whilst in the Liquify Persona. You can easily move backwards or forwards through the history if you want to undo to a certain step or simply preview what the image looked like before certain distortions were applied. Looking at the hint line, it tells us that we can use Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, to twirl anti-clockwise, and Shift to slow down the effect. I can hold both together to apply both behavior modifiers simultaneously. Next on the tools, we have the pinch and the punch tools. Think of the pinch tool as pinching pixels out towards you. This increases the size of a given area, gradually fading the effect out near the edge of the brush. Now, if I wanted to decrease the size of an area, rather than switch across to the punch tool, which does the opposite to the pinch tool, I can instead hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, then click and hold, or click drag. If you are trying to distort areas selectively, two important tools will be the Freeze and the Thaw tools found at the bottom of the Tools panel. The Freeze tool allows you to draw out a region where you effectively want to freeze the pixels in place and stop them from being distorted. So I could click drag and freeze the head, for example. Then select the Push Forward tool and start distorting pixels 
around the edge of the jaw. This allows me to distort the cloud pixels, but avoid disfiguring the skull. The Thaw tool then allows you to unmark areas again, allowing them to be distorted. Once you are happy with the liquify changes, you can click Apply in the top left of the interface to commit them. This destructively commits those changes. For some workflows, this might be sufficient, but you may also wish to apply these distortions non-destructively instead. To demonstrate this, I'll select the neon triangle layer, which has a mask applied and is intersecting the skull. Then I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Distort, Liquify. This now enters the Liquify persona, but if I click Done, I'll quickly show you that Affinity Photo has added a live Liquify layer into the Neon Triangle layer. At any time, I can now click on the Liquify layer thumbnail to enter the Liquify persona. As an example, I could use the Twirl tool to give the neon lines a wavy appearance. Like so. And once I'm finished, I can simply click Done. And those changes will be stored and applied as a live filter layer. This means I could hide the liquify layer to see the original result, and show it again to see the distorted result. Again, I can click on the liquify layer thumbnail to re enter the liquify persona and experiment further if I wish. If I wanted to restore certain areas of the distorted result but not others, I could use the Liquify Reconstruct tool, then click drag over the areas I want to return to their normal appearance, whilst still leaving the other areas distorted. And that was a look at the Liquify functionality in Affinity Photo, covering both destructive and non-destructive variants. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.